In this video we are going to 3D print a transparent water bomb and 7 different impellers. We are going to see how they work and perform and which one is the most efficient. Yes, we are going to finally measure the efficiency. The first 5 impeller designs are widely used in centrifugal water bombs, but we also have two bonus impellers. Those ones are not used in any water bomb. Those are experimentals and it's interesting to see how they perform next to the actual impellers. I don't want to spoil anything, but the results were surprising. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. The water bump we are going to build is a simple centrifugal water bump with a volute casing. The water bump is powered by 775 DC motor. Every impeller has diameter of 70 mm and has four blades. The test subject is a different shape of the blades. We are going to measure every impeller performance and efficiency. Also because the water bump housing is transparent, we can see inside every impeller in action. But before we can do all of that, we need to 3D print and build the water bump. So let's get started. I 3D printed all parts for this water bump with PTG. I choose PTG because first of all, it's a good material. It's easy to print and have all properties we need. Instead of PLA, this material can hold water. Like my previous test showed, PLA is not the best material when exposed to water. And for printing, I use GDTEC Q1 Pro. The water bump assembly is not complicated. I started by connecting 775 DC motor to the motor mount with M4 ports. I connected the coupler to the motor shaft because it makes it easier to change the impellers later on. The motor mount has an opening at the side to have access to coupler screws. Before we can connect the motor to the water bump housing, I had to remove some supports. Because it's PGG, it was a bit pain to get them off, but I managed to do so without damaging the parts. Now I installed one bearing to the outer side of the housing, and the inner side goes one shaft seal. Now we can connect those two parts together with 6 M4 bolts, or 8, I don't remember. To connect the impeller to the water bump, we need one shaft more with one side flat. This type of design is not best, but it's best when I need to continuously change the impellers. So I got myself a 60mm shaft and started filing one side flat. I'm doing this by hand, because when I use some electric device, like an angle grinder or grindstone, I always overdo it and the fit is not tight enough. This way I'm getting the exact result I need for this water bump, by continuously testing the fit. The shaft looks nice and now the water bump is ready. When I was going to screw on the lead, I realized that I had forgotten the threaded inserts. I should install them before I connected the motor to the housing. It's just way more comfortable, but I'm not going to disassemble everything just for this. By the way, I'm going to use threaded inserts instead of undersized holes that I usually use. I'm not doing it because it holds the water bump together stronger or something, this is not the case. I'm doing it because I have to screw and unscrew the lead so many times during this video. The undersized holes just wear down extremely quickly. I know this by my own experience. But now finally the water bump should be ready for testing. By the way, this lead, I'm not going to use it. I'm actually going to use this one. This is completely transparent and it looks like a glass, but it's resin printed. Well, I didn't print this by myself. I ordered this from PCB Way. I don't know how they do this type of transparent parts. I have tried to print transparent by myself, but I don't even get close to this result. That's why for the last 4 years I have used PCBWay service and every single time they have done absolutely amazing job. By the way, PCBWay also has 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and even injection molding service. Using PCBWay service is as easy as it can be. Select your preferred manufacturing method, upload your 3D model, select the material and PCBWay will do the rest. And the selection of materials is actually insane. You can choose between basic filaments like PLA, ABS, nylon and so on. Or you want something spicy like engineering resins or even metal. PCB way service is absolutely excellent if you need something but you don't have right machine skills or tools. I don't have CNC and even if, I don't know how to use it. But I need pretty often CNC acrylic. So instead of spending thousands of dollars to buy one and lot of hours to learn it, Instead, I upload my 3D models to PCBWay website and I get perfect parts every single time. PCBWay is your one-stop solution. But now, back to the video. I mean, the water bump works for sure. I was pretty confident to start testing at the same day. When I tried the water bump in my actual testing setup, this had a curved pipe for self-priming. Well, it didn't prime itself. I tried all type of tricks, but it just didn't prime. So some changes have to be made. And at first I was thinking, maybe the pipe diameter was a bit too wide, so I made it a bit thinner.
Well, it didn't change anything. Then I had the idea to increase the impeller plates. Right now I'm using four bladed impeller, but I increased the number to six. Still, it didn't work. Meanwhile, the Domachi was monitoring the whole situation and told me to cut the shit. The water pump has to stay under the water line. Basically, the whole setup looks like this. Pretty straightforward, it doesn't need some heavy explanation. To be 100% sure everything works, I run the test. And everything worked really well. Surprisingly well even. So now let's finally start the testings. My test setup looks like this. It's a bit messy, but it works. I set up the wattmeter and wiring is not my strong side. The power I will take from the fully charged car battery and pump the water to this container, that is on the scale. I'm going to pump 5 liters of water per run. I will record the scale and wattmeter and later in the editing software I measure frame by frame the exact time it took to pump the water and what was the average measured watts. I start the timer at the exact moment when the first drop of the water enters the container and end the timer exact moment when the scale passes out. The scale maximum load is 5 kg and it will pass out at the exact moment when it hits 5 kg. I have carefully tested this before. To have a bit more accurate result I will run 3 tests per impeller and then calculate the average time it took to pump 5 liters. When I have this number and also calculate the average power that the water pump used for the test, I can calculate the efficiency. By the way, be noted, the water pump footage you see on the screen was not recorded when I actually measured the results. I have only two cameras, one of them was recording scale and other wattmeter. The actual test footage looked like this, which is boring as hell. But of course we wanna see water pump in action, so I recorded water pumps after the tests were done. We start the test with the grey impeller. This is the most basic water pump impeller ever. Four straight plays from the center to the side. No bends, no twists, no curves. Just straight plates. But I know by my own experience, this impeller actually performs pretty well. The average time to pump 5 liters of water with this impeller was 4.28 seconds. The average power during this run was 385 watts. So the impeller efficiency is 10.92 liters per watt hour. By the way, I am really relieved my watt meter worked flawlessly. I actually set this up for my last video where I used Coca Cola and Mentos to produce electricity. But it didn't work then. The reason was so low amount of energy didn't turn the device on. I didn't know this for sure at this point, but now I know this is actually working and not broken. By the way, yes, I produced electricity with Coca-Cola and Mentos in my last video. This is the coolest video I have ever made. I highly recommend to check this out. The next one we are going to test is the red impeller. This is similar to the grey impeller, except the blades have a slight offset from the center. It's interesting to see if this light offset make any difference in the test results. The only way to know is to run the actual test. When I was working with the impeller it felt exactly the same as the last one. I was pretty sure the result is really close. And I was not wrong. It took 4.17 seconds to bump 5 liters of water. By the performance it's slightly better than the last one. I mean it was so close but slightly better. The power I measured 399.2 watts and the efficiency of this impeller is 10.82 liters per watt hour. By the performance, slightly better, by the efficiency, slightly worse. So close, but difference is there. Now we start testing curved impellers. Orange and baby blue. Both of them have curved plates, but they curve a bit differently. The orange impeller blades start curving from the middle, and the outside is straight. The baby blue impeller is exactly opposite. The middle is straight, but the tips of the blade are curved. This will be interesting to see will this make any difference and if, how much. We start with the orange impeller. The orange impeller pumped 5 liters of water in 4.06 seconds. This means this impeller performed better than both of the previous impellers. While running the test, in average it used 397.35 watts of power. This means the efficiency of this water pump impeller is 11.16 liters per watt hour. Best impeller we have tested so far. We continue with the baby blue impeller. Those plates are curved from the tips and the center is straight. While running the test, the pump felt exactly like the last one. I was pretty sure the result were again really close, but I was wrong. This impeller pumped 5 liters of water with 4.20 seconds, which is worse than the previous one and the red impeller. The efficiency of this impeller is 10.96 liters per watt hour. This is a bit better than the first two impellers, grey and red, but the orange impeller keeps the first place. The last impeller before the experimentals is this black one. 
This impeller place does not start from the center, but are curved, and they expand a little bit. By the way, I designed this impeller. If you look at any centrifugal water pump, this type of design is kinda common, and close to a real water pump. When I designed this, I didn't do any calculations or simulations. I freestyled. Probably that's why this impeller performed the worst of all of them, with an average 4.29 seconds. But the efficiency is not the worst, 10.87 liters per watt hour. Close to the last place, but not quite there. After testing 5 impellers, the results are here. In terms of performance, the orange impeller took the first place. Second place went to the red one and third place to the baby blue. The grey impeller took the fourth place and the black impeller ended up last. This test was close but the orange impeller won the competition by a large margin. The others didn't differ from each other too much. But when we look at efficiency, the clear winner again is orange impeller. Baby blue came in second, grey in third, black in fourth and the red impeller finished last. It's the same story again. The first place is far ahead of the others and the results of the rest didn't differ much. But we have more new impellers. Those ones are experimental and I designed them just for fun. To be honest, I don't expect them to work. In the best case scenario, they perform terribly. The yellow impeller is inspired by the grey impeller that we tested first. It's reverse design. Instead of having four straight blades, it has four pathways from the center to side. It's kinda like a negative mold for the grey impeller. So I installed the impeller to the water pump and ran the test. I was surprised that this impeller actually pumps the water and it doesn't look that bad. But what was not so surprising were the numbers. This impeller pumps 5 liters of water with 5.05 seconds. And the efficiency 9.41 liters per watt hour. It means it takes the last place by the performance and by the efficiency. The next one is even worse than the last one. This blue impeller has only one spiral blade. Like I don't know what to say more about this impeller, I have low expectations. Again to my big surprise this impeller pumps the water, and it seems to do it pretty well. I ran 3 tests like every other impeller in this video, but those numbers were a bit too unbelievable. So I ran more 3 tests to have even more accurate results. So the average time for 5 liters after 6 test runs was 4.02 seconds. This means it outperformed every impeller in this video. The average power was 362.25 watts. So the efficiency of this impeller is 12.35 liters per watt hour. This means again, it beat every impeller by far with efficiency. But still, it doesn't mean it won. Because it was not included to the test. And it was not included to the test because it didn't follow one main rule of the test. Every impeller have to have exactly 4 blades. Even though this one blade is really long, it's still different thing than 4 different short plates. Though it's not fair to say this impeller is a winner. But still it doesn't mean those numbers were not surprising and impressive. I'm actually looking forward to test this impeller more in the future. That was the test for today. If you compare this test to my other impeller test videos, the results didn't differ much from the previous ones. To be honest, I haven't done many test videos like this on my channel lately. But I plan to start making more of them again. If you like this video and wanna see something like this in the future, leave a like. Anyway, I'm really grateful that you watched this video, and I hope it was interesting and that you learned something new. To make sure you don't miss my any future videos, hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on. But for now, thank you for watching and bye.